Rainwater Spiritual from Gabriel Petrangelo right here on the Arizona 411. I still need to get that that cleared up there. Before that, way to fly to kick off the third set triple play. We've got Gabrielle on the phone this evening. Gabrielle, thank you so much for taking the call. Yeah, glad to be here. Uh, we uh, kicked off the third set triple play with Way to Fly off of your On My Way Back Home album that you put out in 2020. I imagine uh, you recorded that in a good portion uh, during 2019. Now, you told us that you've been recording at home for well over 20 years, but on that particular project, you worked with uh, Jim Waters and, and Jim Blackwood. Let's talk a little bit about how that project came about and how it ended up that you were working with those guys. Yeah, well, Jim Waters um, and I go back pretty far. He he was a big part of Silver Thread Trio, my, my old band, and he recorded our second album. And so that's when I first met him in 2010-ish. And uh, I'm really good friends with him and his his family. And uh, he's just like a really great engineer and super um, uh, easy to be creative with. So when I came back around full circle to wanting to release a solo EP, he was like the first one in my mind. And we got together and that's how it, it sort of just started happening there with Jim. And that, that that culminated in the making of <laughs> On My Way Back Home that you released in 2020. Uh, were you able to do anything? Like, uh, were you able to play behind it at all? Because uh, uh, if my memory serves correctly, 2020, something really crazy happened. Uh, when, you, yeah. <laughs> when you ended up putting out on, on My Way Back Home, were you able to play behind mm. it? Or was it just a release that you put out there and said, C'est la vie? Well, I played I played two shows at Congress and then COVID hit, so that kind of put a squash on all my plans. It's like, well, here we here we go, uh, which yeah. uh, <laughs> leads us uh, <laughs> into to 2021's Rainwater Spiritual. Uh, that's uh-huh. a, a a song that you uh, self recorded and produced, as we as we said at the beginning of this conversation, that you've been doing that for about 20 years. Uh, what was the what was the thought process behind Rainwater Spiritual? Uh, what was the thought behind sitting down and recording it and then and then releasing it when you did? Yeah, well, I um, Brad Lancaster is a good friend of mine, and he's a rainwater harvesting kind of author and uh, teacher in Tucson, and he was asking musicians to record songs that were inspired around like rainwater harvesting and I'm good friends with him. So we sat down and we, you know, in the song, it kind of steps through a lot of his uh, teachings, I guess you could say. And um, so I did that for him, for his rainwater work. Well, it's absolutely beautiful. And I'll tell you, I do notice there is a, a quite a water theme in a lot of your music. Is there a connection with you and water in particular, or is it just happenstance? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, well, I would say, you know, I'm a I'm a big fan of nature. And uh, so there's a lot of themes of nature and water is such a big part of, you know, it's one of the four main elements. So I would suppose that, yeah, I, I probably draw on that a lot for that reason, my inspiration from nature. Well, uh, and okay, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I also... I just grew up in Tucson and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like in love with the Southwest. And so I've, uh, in the, in the recent past couple of years, I've written songs about places that I love and, um, water is a theme in that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's, so, it's so precious here. It we don't have a lot is. of it. <laughs> so that, that was kind of what I was gathering from all of it. And that was the feeling that I took away from it. And it made me go, you know, I absolutely love the, the, the water that we get to appreciate out here as well. Uh, well, let's totally. move, let's move into uh, some of your latest work. You put out uh, the single lines of our hands, uh, tell us a little bit about that single. What's the inspiration uh, there? And does that lead us into more Gabrielle music in 2022? Oh, yeah. 
Well, I'm I'm so happy to get that song out there. I actually COVID has been a a really creative time for me, and I've I've written I've written just so many songs, and I'm working on a full length album with Jim Waters again. And uh, Lines of Our Hands was the first is the first song I wanted to release something from it, and I intend to play more in town in Tucson and and out of town. And I have a show that's coming up on March 19th at Hotel Congress. Um, lines of our hands, that song, that song's kind of was, uh, inspired. Um, I, I went through like many people did, uh, kind of he- a heavy time during COVID and it was just sort of a song that, um, came through and just, it felt like, uh, an on, like, a a song of like re- retaining hope amidst great hardship and ha- and not being sure what's going on basically. And, uh, you know, in the song, it talks about how, you know, and I'm still breathing, you know, I'm still here. I've still got so much to be living for. And so I hope it's a, I hope it's a comfort. It was a comfort for me to write it. So, well, I, I feel like it, it's in line with all of your other music. It's honest, it's, it's heartfelt and, Mm -hmm. and it's extremely touching every song i i have a different takeaway from and i absolutely love it well uh gabrielle we look so forward to supporting everything that you've got going on in 2022 uh and we can't wait to to see you out live uh hopefully we'll get to check uh check you out in march thank you so much gabrielle for stopping by the show thank you Bo. thanks for having me Gabrielle Petrangelo with Lines of Our Hands right here on the Arizona 411 third set triple play feature.